optimal hypertrophy gains made easy. Dr. Pack here, a real doctor. You know what they say, an apple a day keeps the doctor closer to you because I like apples. Give me your damn apple. But that said, this is the easiest way for you to think of optimal training. We often see people essentially complaining about other people making content on how you could potentially optimize your gains, exercise selection adjustments, and so on and so forth. There's just a lot of information out there. However, it all comes down to a few basic principles that as long as you follow those principles, you are likely to be making optimal gains. Let's start with a very basic. So the first thing that you want to do is make sure that you're performing enough training volume. If you're somebody who's trying to optimize muscle gains, starting at approximately 10 sets per muscle group per week is a solid starting point. And treat those sets as direct sets. So you wouldn't be looking at 10 sets for your biceps where you count five or your lat pull down or row sets as sets for your biceps. You have to think of things like your legs as separate muscle groups. So you wouldn't be doing just 10 sets for your quads per week and calling it a day for leg training, but you'd also need to consider your hamstrings and your calves as a separate muscle groups. Starting at 10 to 15 sets per muscle group per week puts you right in the optimization zone. And for a lot of people, it may be all the volume that you will need. I think that for a good amount of you, going even higher as far as training volume goes is a, a safe bet that you can make and it's worth making in the context of optimization, but we'll get to that in a second. After you set your initial uh, training volume and you've said, okay, I'm going to do 10 to 15 sets per muscle group per week, then you need to pick a bunch of exercises. Ideally, Pick two to three exercises per muscle group and select exercises that train the different functions of a muscle if that muscle has multiple functions. I would recommend picking exercises that place a lot of tension on the stretched position. Now, for example, when doing triceps, you wouldn't necessarily want a tricep kickback where the majority of tension is at the short position when you're flexing your tricep but exercises like the overhead tricep extension, where you're getting not only a nice stretch, but you're also getting most of the tension in that length and position. I would also pick exercises that offer you a stable environment where you can focus specifically on the muscle group that you're trying to target. Keep the majority of your sets very close to failure, somewhere in the one to two reps in reserve mark, and have the occasional set to failure, ideally, on exercises where you can safely go to failure and you can do so without a ton of fatigue. Make sure that the range of motion allows you to get a solid stretch on whatever muscle you're trying to target. But if you're somebody who's trying to maximize hypertrophy, having a few of your sets as length and partials and separating them from your full range of motion sets may be a good idea. That said, there are obviously some other things to consider and one of those is tempo. So if you are lifting with concentric and eccentric tempo combined. So a total repetition tempo of anywhere between two to eight seconds, you seem to be covered. Make sure you're lifting with close to maximal intent on the concentric. Although if you want to somewhat slow the concentric as well, and I'm again saying, as long as your repetition duration is somewhere in the two to eight second range and you're getting close to failure, you could slow it down a bit more on an exercise where that may feel a bit better on your joints or whatever else. For me personally, I spend a bit more time in the eccentric phase of a lift as it allows me to get a nice stretch on most things and allows me to focus on getting in that stretch versus going too fast and missing that opportunity. Now, whether pausing in the lengthened position is beneficial for muscle growth is something that we haven't really explored in the literature. I would say that it's not necessarily a bad idea to do so, although I would not recommend it as a game changing practice. But if you're trying to maximize hypertrophy, spending that extra second at long muscle lengths, or at least keeping the tension at long muscle lengths may have something to offer for hypertrophy. Worst case scenario, you wasted 30 seconds during the entirety of your training. It's really not a big deal. It allows you to keep things very strict as far as technique goes, and at the same time, you are not going to be losing out on gains if you were to do a slight pause at the end. Now, as far as exercise specific directions, whether you need to slightly point your elbow in or out or whatever, watch a few tutorials on how to perform the you know, exercises that you eventually decide to go with. 
but at the end of the day it's likely not going to make an insane difference whether you make some slight adjustments based on pressure and preference as far as rest goes between each set because i hear that often rest for as long as you need uh, until you're ready to tackle the next set that in some cases may be as little as a minute in some other cases it may be as long as three minutes your mindset going in the gym should be something along the lines of beating your previous performance either by adding a bit of weight or an extra rep here and there and adding sets should be kept as a huge sort of change that you will be making when things are slowing down or are feeling way too easy keeping things at a 5 to 15 rep range will make things relatively manageable and won't have you there wrapping stuff out until the gym manager comes to you and says bro you've been here for seven and a half hours doing sets of 35 reps and everything please leave i want to go home the current literature shows that frequency does not matter much if volume is equated so keep in mind that you do not need to lose your mind about training a muscle two to three times per week although as a good rule of thumb i think most people manage better when they train things twice per week because it allows you to split your volume in different sessions versus doing everything in one session so instead of doing all your quad and hamstring work in one session splitting that over two weeks is probably going to give you the best outcome possible that will land you in a um, training setup where you're training anywhere between four to six times per week which i think is a good way to approach an optimized training pro program for hypertrophy tracking your workouts probably makes sense if you're trying to leave no stones unturned and tracking how difficult each session feels will allow you to know when it's time to add a bit more volume if we were to use the session rp scale out of seven i would say that if you're consistently seeing that you're hitting an srp of three on some of your sessions of three and you know your average is near four for the majority of time that's where you can start adding a bit more volume Arch. touch it Keep in mind that extreme volumes going as high as, you know, 35, 40 sets per week may have something more to offer. So if you're seeing that doing 10 to 15 sets per muscle group per week is fairly manageable for the majority of your training, and there are days, let's say on your upper day, where you could potentially add more volume, adding a few more sets when that SRP rating is relatively low and that session is very manageable, probably makes sense we've done a blast seven hour podcast over at stronger by science with greg knuckles and milo looking at the literature on extreme volumes link in the description below absolutely last but not least be in a five to ten percent surplus make sure that you're consistently gaining some body weight while obviously killing it in the gym and pushing your performance ensure that you're mostly eating whole foods getting plenty of fiber in and being as healthy as possible sleep at least seven hours per night ideally at the same time and manage stress to the best of your abilities it's also advisable that you do maintain uh, some level of physical activity outside the gym to ensure that you're in good health. Hitting anywhere between seven to 10,000 steps per day will do that. It's really not much harder than just showing up, doing the damn work and going home. Deload, and that's actually the last thing that I wanted to mention. There will come a point where pushing your training so hard will require you to take a step back if you've had two weeks of consistently missing out on reps and having to decrease the weight you're doing on certain exercises take an easy week of training if you're somebody who's trying to maximize muscle growth still train in that week still keep some light lifting leave you know four to six reps in reserve do approximately 50 percent of the training volume that you were doing before and then build back up and continue doing so until you need another deload these tips should get you there and i look forward to seeing you look like an absolute monster when i take my cat to the vet and i see you there getting your usual whatever injection you're supposed to get don't forget to like subscribe comment and of course buy the official doctor pack merch which is not available and it's essentially this shirt which i will sell at an auction for millions of dollars make sure you buy it maybe this works you never know maybe we have that one weirdo that has a fetish with greek bald bearded guys and wants to buy this shirt for you bro million it's all yours i won't even wash it please help me live a stress-free life by making this random joke it will also make for an awesome story telling my kids yeah at some point i made this joke on that youtube video some weirdo bought it million 
put that on the side, invested it on the side. And now look at us. We're homeless because then I gambled all your money away. Go fucking work, you dumb kid. Make money. Your father is homeless. Thank you. Peace.